Hello dear students, today we will discuss the topic agriculture distribution, regional separate and features from 4000 to 600 BC. The main focus will be on geography and sustenance approach, aftermath of Harappan civilization, archaeological cultures, agropastoralism in charcoalithic cultures, second urbanization and complex state societies. Dear students, the continuity and change were seen in the separate of agriculture in North India. The Harappan and post Harappan periods are when irrigation systems first appeared along with a list of staple crops that included rice and the usage of simple plows. Ecology was one of the several factors including others that significantly influenced these developments. While wet rice cultivation with a high yield was the trademark of the Gangetic Plains, new innovations in agriculture methods brought about a new era of irrigation outside of this area. Geography and Sustenance Approaches did students early India's potential for agriculture as well as its separate and regional differences were heavily influenced by terrain. Early India's agricultural practices including shift cultivation, slash and burn, sweden or jhum, hoe and plug farming. The roots and valleys made it easier for pastoralists to move between Tibet in east and Afghanistan or Central Asia in the north. Farmers were drawn to several of the rivers because they were covered in fertile silt. Disaster was caused by the erratic flow of certain rivers including the Satluj, Kosi, Tista and Brahmaputra. The first urbanization along the Indus river system began in the second part of the third millennium BC, while the second along the Ganges river system began in the first millennium BC. These developments were later seen on the plains of Brahmaputra, land clearing, one of the prerequisites for agriculture expansion was limited by technology and environment. The Gangetic Plains were densely forested and it took some time before the fertility of the soil could be exploited for extensive agriculture. Dear students, the northern plains did not have all the same productive areas as the Gangetic region. Wet rice cultivation produces higher surpluses allowing for the maintenance of complex societies in the eastern India and the middle Gangetic Plains. Wheat and barley were grown using the rain-fed agriculture in the northwest. A cattle breeding was typically done in the drier areas. The Thar Desert region in western Rajasthan hardly ever allowed for agriculture conditions. The desert was frequently visited by caravan traders which caused the local trading hubs to expand. However, with the development of irrigation facilities, some of the sub-regions in Rajasthan began to be cultivated. In contrast, the areas in the northeast Bengal and Orissa benefited from the blowing of northeast monsoon from December to February. These areas received plenty of rain and were henceforth blasted with dense vegetation. The varying settlement patterns and forest types were frequently influenced by climate factors. The majority of the villages were clustered in the dry regions. Fields surrounded the towns and pastures were far away. Linear homosettles were typical in the water, rice growing eastern parts of the India. The range of the forest includes tropical, deciduous, pine and fir as well as the vast terrain forests in the wetter regions. The vegetation in these forests include teak, ebony and sandalwood in addition to savanna, shrubs and coarse grasses. Mangrove swamps could be found in the estuaries of the Indus, Ganges and Mahanadi river systems. Dear students, the other significant issue that has affected the sustainability of the various agriculture locations has been soil taps. The differing availability of natural nutrients, water retention and pliability has all influenced the tap and rate of agriculture growth. From the fertile alluvial and cotton soil to the less fruitful red soil and laterite. 
However, due to climate ambiguity and uncertainty, local Brahman agriculture calendars were essential to cultivators. Sowing and harvesting in agriculture began to be correlated with the lunar and solar calculations. Dear students, now when uh, Aranya and Sitra or Janapada clash. Dear students, according to Mahabharat, several such uh, demonic monsters as well as the animals and people were obliterated during the burning of uh, Khandana Vana for the establishment of Indraprastha. These trees and the people who lived there stood in stark contrast to the orderly world of plow cultivators. But neither the Vana or Aranya nor the Setra or Janapada was homogeneous or unchangeable places. There may be overlaps in actuality. Therefore, the alleged antagonism between these two systems was only maintained theoretically. According to Harish Charita, which was written in the 7th century AD, these forest dwellers were assimilated and engaged in subsistence activities that were comparable to those of the nearby peasants. They practiced it in sedentary cultivation, horticulture or shifting cultivation. When the population was limited, clearing trees to make more area suitable for cultivation did not significantly damage the vegetation. But over the past few centuries, it has continued unabatedly, leading to the loss of forest cover. Cotlier's Earth Shastra advised strict state regulation of forest deforestation, perhaps to prevent over-exploitation. Now we will talk about the Harpan civilization dynasty and the archaeological cultures. Some historians regard the Harpan decline as transformation in the nature of civilization. It is contended that while the urban features disappeared, agriculture in some areas continued and flourished. Post-urban Harappan situation, there were various distinct cultures in the Indus post-urban area located in northwest frontier province in the Swat culture 4, which existed between 1800 and 1400 BC. Farmers produced grapes, linseed, wheat, barley, rice, oats and lentils. Domesticated animals including sheep, pigs, goats and cattle were also consumed. Sites like Sibiri and Pirak in the Kachi plains of north eastern Baluchistan provide evidence of the cultivation of Rabi and Kharif crops. Wheat, barley, oats, chickpeas and linseed are among the Rabi crops while rice millets, jawar and china and grapes were the main Kharif crops. Domesticated animals included the humped bull, goats and sheep. Very few villages made up the Jukar culture which was found at Mohanjadaro, Chanhodro, Amri and Jukar that was the north of Mohanjadaro. And it did not leave any traces of crop production. Now dear students, we will be talking about agropastoralism in Chalcolithic cultures. There were a lot of farmers, pastoralists and hunter-gatherers living outside the Indus or Harappan region. It is challenging to determine the impact of Harappa on their life. There are several obvious variations in the crop combination, pattern and agriculture techniques during the Neolithic and Chalcolithic periods. Dear students, from the Swat Valley, reports of rice have been made. Archaeologists have deduced that a plow and was used in the instance based on the discovery of a tiny field that had been plowed and had furrow traces dating to 1300 or 1200 calibrated BC. Some sites dated to 3rd and 2nd millennium BC at Burzuhama and Gufkral in the Kashmir region were using sickle shaped implements for harvesting grain. Such implements are also discovered from Central Asia. Wheat and barley have been reported from Balathal in southeast Rajasthan and appear as dominant crops in Malwa. Millets generally cultivated in the south are represented in Balatha too. 
There are a number of Chalcolithic sites in central India and Rajasthan, including the Kayatha culture in the Chambal Valley, Dangwada near Ujjain, and Ahar in Rajasthan. In contrast to the Indus culture, the peasant in the Gangetic Plains was no longer bound to the tiny patches of floodlands that were continuously replenished with moisture and silt. He was able to boost the output by moving to the near virgin fields that have been reclaimed from forests thanks to the monsoons. Dear students, we can better comprehend the relationship between environment and crop pattern by studying the Chalcolithic societies like OCP, Ochre Colored Poetry, BRW, Black and Red Wear, and PGW, Painted Grey Wear. Two series like Rice or Isa Sativa, uh, Lethira Sativa, and Barley, Hodium Vulgari, as well as the two pulses, Grammy, Hul, and Khesri are among the crops grown and Atranjikera. Rice was cultivated as a summer crop and required plenty of water. Barley, a winter crop, could produce good yield with modest irrigation. Dear students, Upper Ganga, Yamuna, and Middle Gangetic Dob are home to the BRW, that's black and red weird civilization. Uh, Atran, Jikera, No, Jodhpura, and Naran are few of the significant locations for it. The crop pattern at Atran, Jikera is essential, the same as the ochre colored poetry levels. At No, reports of the kidney shaped horse, gram, seeds, as well as orad rice have been made. From Jodhpura's impressions, the Oroiza Sateva variety of a rice has been discovered. One can locate to a sophisticated agriculture system at Narhan. The principal crops found here are hulud and six row barley, rice, club and bread, wheat, mustard seeds, linseed, and pulses. Within the northern black polished weir culture, habitation separate from well drained area away from lakes and rivers to the most inhospitable areas. Some of the areas like Mathura remained pastoral for centuries because the soil was not conducive for the growth of agriculture. In contrast, the middle Gangetic plains did not have settlement clusters or nucleated villages before 500 BC. The NBPW culture marks the arrival of sedentary peasant farming. This is testified by evidence related to the cultivation of varieties of rice, including the transplanted and plugged cultivation, etc resulting in high yield. Now, dear students, we will be talking about second urbanization and complex state societies. The process of urbanization in early historic India presumes the support of a prosperous hinterland. The environmental conditions like land, soil, and moisture, etc., not only conditioned the hinterland and their agriculture viability, but also had a direct bearing on the specific crops being produced. Newer technologies and high yield can be considered as the important basis of urbanization. The forces unleashed by these socio-economic changes created favorable conditions for the arrival of complex state societies. Now, dear students, we will be talking about environmental setting. The centers of second urbanization located in the different regions like northwestern broaderlands, central Ganges plains, Ganges Brahmaputra Delta, Western coastal plains, deltas of the eastern coast, and in central and peninsular India shared the common factors of soil fertility and higher agriculture potential. The northeastern valley was home to Buddhist monasteries and is today famous for citrus orchards. Buddhist monasteries were also situated in Charasta through which flowed the Kabul and Swat rivers. Kandahar is known as the oasis city on the eastern side of Dashti Margo, the desert basin of the Helmund River. The central Gangs Plains are an area of a monsoon climate and large forest trees can be found here. Varieties of alluvium could be utilized at different times and in different climatic conditions. Settlements in older alluvium were regularly established. This situation is also true of Gangs Brahmaputra Delta. Rice was grown as a principal crop. 
the agricultural potential and the environmental setting of central Gujarat plains are similar to those of Western Gangs plains. On the basis of a study of settlement patterns of Kathiawad, it has been suggested that the region practiced flourishing cultivation in the early historic period. Now, iron and rice, the causative agents. The rise of a second urbanization and complex state societies in the first millennium has been linked to transformative potential of iron technology and wet rice cultivation. These two components facilitated the increase in carrying the capacity of the land and helped in sustaining urban centers. Urbanism seen in its various dimensions, that is proliferation of settlements, arts and crafts was inextricably linked to the new methods of cultivation and the high yield. It is argued that in the Chalcolithic cultures outside Harappa, the cultivated land not only included the alluvial strip of river valleys, but also the heavier extensive stretches of the black cotton soil. As far as the crop pattern is concerned, the basic list remains the same from BRW to NBPW phase. Also, the Dob region was already being exploited in the PGW phase. The inhabited settlement area rose by 32 percent from the BRW to PGW and 38 percent from PGW to NBPW. Dear students, up to 700 to 600 BC, the sites of Kosombi, Hastinapur and Atranji Khaira showed that the agriculture productivity remained low and the economy was marked by a combination of hunting animal husbandry and agriculture. Land was either marginally important or it was cultivated with wooden plug shares. It has been seen that after a flood, the fields in the riverine areas start to break. Even now, people continue to use brooms to use seeds to fill these gaps. Middle iron phase is defined as occurring between 700 or 600 BC and the first century AD. Some of the sites during this time were close to regions with abundant raw materials. As has already been stated in the instance of the Narhan excavation, the agriculture situation clearly improved when the crops were switched from single to double crop arrangements. Dead students, besides sickless and excess, plug share spades and hose have been reported. However, as represented at the site of Rajgat, animal husbandry, both the drought and millet animals was still in vogue. The emergence of historical period in first millennium BC or AD definitely ushered in an era of agriculture implements. Although the process of colonizing and exploiting riverine regions had already started, it can be argued that farming tools were essentially non-existent in the early stages. Additionally, sites like Pirak would demonstrate that an iron age may not have developed just from the presence of iron artifacts in the site sequences. The development of urban centers and sophisticated state societies in the first millennium should not be solely attributed to the availability of iron, even when considered in the context of environment and land use patterns. Manifestation of wide varieties of rice cultivation in archaeology and literature and the significance it occurred in Indian rituals underline its antiquity. Archaeologists have argued in favor of an Indian center of origin of cultivated rice. Chinese and Southeast Asiatic centers may not have had uniform direct bearing of rice cultivation in India. The evidence of rice cultivation at Koldiva, the Calibrated ranges of which are 7505 to 7033 BC, 6190 to 5764 BC, and 5432 to 5051 BC, that cannot be summarily dismissed. Although the seed broadcast method was initially practiced, the transplanted variety began to be cultivated in the middle Gangetic Valley only. It was a well-established practice by the beginning of the early historic period. The enhancement of the yield under transplanted variety is an undeniable fact. Whether 
this variety along with other variables had a direct bearing on the rise of complex state, societies is still being debated. Dear students, the study of agriculture dispersion in North India demonstrates that with the eastward expansion following the collapse of Harappan civilization, the core list of crops did not change significantly. However, once made cultivable, the Gangetic Plains afforded the favorable conditions for continued development. The extraction of iron and other resources went hand in hand with the movement in the epicenter from the Gangetic Plains to the peripheries. Early medieval times saw significant colonization of red soil forest terrain. The practice of giving Brahmans land endowments aided in the separate of agriculture expertise. With this, we conclude today's lecture. Hope you have understood well. Thank you.